We want to keep all these magnificent leaves as they are. Really, balance is key. I like to watch the roots grow. Hello friends, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma, and today I'm going to be talking about Marantas. You might also know these beauties as prayer plants because they move their leaves like a lot and they kind of open up during the daytime and in the evenings they'll close up and go vertical again. Kind of mimics like praying hands coming together. I will show you the plant, but kind of mimics praying hands coming together at night. So they actually do this because in the daytime they're trying to get as much light as possible. Like if the sun is above them, if they're laying flat, they can get more sun. And at night they close up letting any water that's left on their leaves or if any rain comes, it can drip right off rather than collecting on its leaves, which can cause like fungal problems and rot and stuff. So it's like a defense mechanism that they've created to survive better in their natural habitat, which is pretty awesome. Prayer plants are pretty low maintenance. Once you know their care and if you can give it to them, they tend to be pretty easy to take care of. So. That's, again, why they're one of the more common houseplants because they're pretty easy. So I actually have two types of prayer plants. This one, which is a red prayer plant or a Luconiara, I think, or maybe a tricolor. I think it's got a few different kinds of names. And then I also have this one up here, which is a green prayer plant or a Kirchoviana, I think it's pronounced. But they're just two types of varieties. There are actually over like 40 or 50 varieties of Maranta plants, like so many different combinations. Of course, some more rare and some easier to find like this one and the red one that I have. They're pretty common and they could be found in most houseplant shops. So really quickly before I get into the care, I just wanna say if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up down below and comment on other houseplants you'd like me to talk about in the future and subscribe for more videos. So let's get into it. So one thing that's super important with Marantas is that you don't let them get too dry. They do not like to dry out completely between waterings. Ideally, their soil is kept evenly moist, but like not sopping. I try to water when the soil is dry, probably about a third to a halfway down in the pot, but I just go in with my moisture meter and check the soil. If it says it's dry, give it some water. Pretty easy. I think in the spring and summer, which is the growing season, I probably end up watering maybe once or twice a week. And that slows down drastically in the autumn and winter, maybe once every week or two, depending on how dry it is. So there are two really, really, really important notes when it comes to water. First is that you should be watering in the mornings. If you do that, it gives the plants all day to soak up that water. Whereas at night, it's not soaking up as much and it can lead to things like root rot and overwatering and stuff. So water in the morning and you wanna make sure that you're watering with room temperature or lukewarm water. So like just above room temperature. Because if you use cold water, it can shock the roots and that can even lead to leaf drop, which I mean, we don't want. We wanna keep all these magnificent leaves as they are. Some signs of both over or under watering is yellowing leaves or dropping leaves. If that is the case, have a look at the soil, check it out. If it's kind of sopping wet, you're probably over watering. If it's bone dry, you're probably under watering. So just take a look at your watering schedule and fix it. Marantas can tolerate lower light, but they definitely prefer bright indirect. If they could have their ideal, it would be bright indirect light, but definitely not direct sun. They do not like direct sun at all. It can scorch and burn their leaves. Also too much direct light can make their leaves fade into a lighter color so they're less vibrant and deep like these ones are. So ideally don't give them too much light. Too little light and it's possible that your plant won't open and close throughout the day because the opening and closing is due to the amount of light it's getting and it might just close up because it's not getting enough light and stay closed and eventually that can cause the plant to die. So maybe give it a little bit more light. 
Really, balance is key. I keep this one probably about a meter or so from a southwest facing window. So it gets pretty much medium to bright indirect light most of the day. And I think it's really enjoying that there. That one, as you can see, it lives in my filming studio. This room is dark a lot more often. It does have a northeast facing window, but I'd say max, it'll get medium indirect light and minimum probably low light. I do, however, have these grow lights over here attached to the shelf, which go on from about 4 p.m. and they stay on till like 9 or 10 p.m. Just giving a little bit of extra light to boost because it's winter and so it's quite dark in here most of the time. In the summer, I probably won't use these as much. I might a little bit, but not nearly as much as I am now because it will get a bit more medium, maybe even bright indirect light. Average household temperatures should be okay for your Marantas. They like between 16 and 27 degrees Celsius or 60 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty average home temperature. Temperatures below like 10 degrees Celsius or 50 Fahrenheit are definitely too cold for your Maranta. They can cause stunted growth. The leaves will brown and shrivel. So if you're noticing that on your plant, maybe put it somewhere a little bit warmer. <laughs> but also you don't want it to be too hot. It's a balance again. If the temperature goes too much above 27 Celsius or 80 Fahrenheit, your plant will probably stop producing leaves, which isn't ideal. Of course, we want it to grow leaves. So try not to let the temperature get too high. They're also not a very big fan of fluctuations in temperature. So keep them away from air vents and heating vents and stuff, radiators. They do not like that sort of intense temperature and like cold air blowing on them and stuff. So don't put them near vents if you can. So humidity is really, really, really important for prayer plants. That's probably where most people go a bit wrong when it comes to these because they do need higher than average household humidity. I think their ideal is probably like above 55, maybe even above 60. They like it quite humid. If you notice that the like edges and the tips of your leaves are browning and like curling, kind of crispy, those are signs that you're probably not giving your plant enough humidity. You should try and boost it. You can do that with a humidifier, which I find is probably the easiest way because you have a bit more control over the situation. You can group it around other plants. You can use a pebble tray or you could give it like a warm water mist once a day just to generally boost the humidity. This is especially, especially, especially important in winter when your central heating is on. That dries out the air a lot. So in winter, you wanna really be making sure that you are giving your prayer plants the humidity that they need. So Marantas have pretty fine roots. They're not super thick and chunky. And this means that they need a really, really, really well draining soil so that it doesn't hold too much moisture and like make those fine roots rot. If you find that your soil is a bit heavy for them, you could add something like perlite or pumice or even sand to give it a bit more air to the mixture. Another thing really important is that your pot has drainage holes. If your pot does not have drainage holes, I would suggest changing it because they're really, really, really important. You need the water to be able to come out of the bottom of the pot. I keep mine in a cash pot like this, which just collects extra water. And after I water it, I can just dump the excess in the sink. So it's ideal really, but drainage holes are super duper, 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 duper important. Marantas like to be repot probably about once a year just to kind of refresh the soil because over time and with a lot of watering, the soil can get quite compact, meaning there's not as much air in there. And because they've got the fine roots, they need the air in order to have a little bit of breathing room. So they like to be repot probably about once a year in order to have some new aerated soil. Their root systems tend to be quite shallow as well. So if you have like a wide shallow pot, 
that would work really, really well for them. The roots kind of go outwards rather than downwards. So if you can give them a shallower pot, that would be ideal. Try not to go up too far in pot size because that will just be too overwhelming for the plant. So keep it like one size up. So one to two inches or two and a half to five centimeters bigger. Marantas like actually quite a lot of fertilizer. Their ideal is to be fertilized like once every two weeks throughout the growing season, which is spring and summer. And then they don't like it at all in the autumn and winter. And again, because their roots are really fine, it's important that you don't overwhelm them with too strong a fertilizer. I personally like to use a half strength so that it's not too much all at once for them. And I use liquid gold leaf fertilizer and so far they seem to like it just fine. But if your fertilizer is too strong, it can actually burn the roots and cause like brown spots on your leaves. So just keep an eye out for that and now you know. Propagation of purplants is so freaking easy. It's good to give your plants a regular prune anyways in order to keep the sort of bushy appearance. And so when you do that, you can also propagate those cuttings. Just be sure that you're cutting just below a leaf node. Then you can take those cuttings, stick them in some water, which is my preferred propagation method, and then wait. Ideally, you should be changing the water like every week or so just so it gets fresh water but again remember don't do it too cold because they don't like that you should start to see roots growing out of the node in a couple of weeks or so once the roots are like two and a half centimeters or an inch or so long you can pot those either straight back into the mama plant pot or give them some fresh new soil you can also put the cuttings directly in the soil without rooting them in water first but I don't prefer that method as much because I like to watch the roots grow. Another great thing about Marantas is that they are not toxic to humans, cats, or dogs. So you don't need to worry about putting them out of reach of children and pets. They will not harm your animals if they accidentally have a nibble on these. So I suppose you could eat this plant. I mean, it's probably not the best, like, I wouldn't suggest it, but you're not gonna get sick or anything, which is great, because they're not toxic. So, one last thing. I also have this little, tiny little one here. And this one is actually in LECA, which are little expanded clay balls. This was actually one of the first plants that I converted to LECA just as like a trial thing. The main plant of this one actually ended up getting thrips over the summer when I had thrips gate. And I really, really, really struggled getting rid of them. It was, it was really difficult to be honest. And eventually I was able to get part of the plant pest free. And so I cut it off, pruned it and chucked it in some water and let it grow some roots and eventually put it in LECA because I wanted to try that and it was growing so well in the water and it was pest free so I figured why not try the LECA and see if that works for me. So far it has been pretty happy. There are some roots coming out of the bottom which means it's healthy. It's just in a little reservoir of water. The water goes up to about there, about a third of the way up and it seems to really like that. It is one of the more difficult plants to transition to LECA from soil because the roots are so fine. They're really prone to rotting in that transition from soil to water. So I think if you do want to have a LECA prayer plant, it's probably best to chop and prop in water and then transition to LECA because those water roots are really what the plant needs in order to function properly with the LECA. Figured it was a fun little experiment and so far it's been really healthy, which is really good. Um, it's gotten loads of new growth. I think when I started it, it maybe had like two or three leaves. Now it's got three, four, nine, nine leaves, which is brilliant. Um, I love a good leaf, but yeah. So just, just giving it a try, seeing, seeing how it works. And so far I'd say that it likes it, so. Yeah. If you are interested in learning more about LECA and semi-hydroponics, 
let me know and I can make a video on that in the future talking about what I've learned. So yeah, let me know down below. So that is it. That is all you need to know in order to take care of your beautiful prayer plant or Maranta. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up down below. Leave a comment on other plants you'd like me to talk about in the future and subscribe for more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye. Prayer plants are pretty. Red plant, 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 which is a red plant. plant, plant. Oh god, this is gonna be a hard video.